So continuing on with fine tuning of OpenAM models, let's take a look first at the OpenAI dashboard. So we're going to train this to, to be a sarcastic chatbot. I'm using a data set that OpenAI provides at least the beginnings of. So I am going to download these two JSON-L files. And what's a JSON-L file? It's just a JSON, it's, a, it's basically a file where a bunch of JSON is put line by line by line. So each line of this is potentially a entire valid JSON entity that would have normally been in a file by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and download both of these two and the validation set as well. So here's the file. This is the training data. We saw this in the last one, but it's, it's basically the messages that you'll pass in. And each of these lines is a separate JSON file, so to speak. And then we're going to also have the expected output, which is, which, which is here. So the expected output is all built completely into this messages. So like the first line, system role. Uh, so this is the system prompt. Uh, it says that Merv is a sarcastic but factual agent. And then we see basically the expected flow. What is the capital of France? If the user says that, then the assistant is expected to make a sarcastic answer like Paris. Well, I created 28 of these. The first three were provided by OpenAI, but I had I used a large language model to extend this, this set so that we have enough data to, uh, to train it on. And then I also have a validation set, which is similar to this, except there's only 10. And that is just something that you will, you will see there. And ignore what I'm also looking at here. This is, this is actually some research that I'm doing for Dynaface. You'll, you'll see that in the future from me. So in the notebook, you'll see, I give you the screenshots and I take you through the whole process. But what we're going to do is just go right to the OpenAI platform and go right to dashboard. And then you'll want to go to fine tuning. You'll need to open that maybe, unless you have the icons memorized, which I do not. So you'll see, I have a bunch of fine tuning prompts or uh, data sets. I'm sorry, these are actually models, fine-tuning models, that I've created. At least in the past, since, since they changed this, this interface. They used to make, it used to be easier to, to delete these, but currently, once you get one of these, you really can't delete it. And then there is an API command, which we'll see in the next part, where you can delete it, but they still show up in the user interface. So. I find that a little obnoxious, but that's how they do it. They don't charge you for storing them here, so I guess what do I have to complain about? So I am going to create one. I need to pick a base model. Now this is where cost gets very important. I suggest doing GPT-40 Mini, and we're gonna train it on the 7.8 version. So July 18th, 7.18 version. This is important, and this is one of the headaches of this. If you have fine-tuned a model, and then they come out with a new version of the foundation model, you've got to re-fine-tune it. Whereas with RAG, you just upgrade to the, to the latest one, and it's, it's augmenting your newer model. Now, that may not work as well as what you had before, and you may have to adjust your RAG capabilities. But for this, you will have to entirely re-fine-tune it. You don't want to use the bigger one here. I mean, you could, but it's gonna cost a lot more. The size of your training set and the size of the underlying model, that is what determines a lot of your cost. So I've opened that there. Uh, I do have exists, I do have these already uploaded, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you how to upload those files. So sarcastic JSON, we'll pick that one and it uploads it, and it's going to have to validate it and go through all that, that fun stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna upload a new one. This is why once you upload them, you don't want, you want to use the existing ones because they've already been validated and it won't take a longer amount of time. So there you see, I've, I've got the two files. 
you should give it a suffix. That's so you can tell it apart from the other one. So I'm going to say sarcastic two, just because I've done others of these. I'm not going to specify a seed and I'm just going to let all of these be auto and we will create the job and it begins training. Now, when you just do everything auto like I did there, you definitely want to keep track of how long this is going because it auto is usually not going to do anything too expensive, but you need you do need to be aware of that. If it, if it starts to go a long time, you you could potentially abort it. So it's validating the files and we're going to fast forward through some of this because each of these does take some time. Validating the files is really simply just making sure those files are in the right format for it to use. All right, it's past that and that didn't take that long. It is now fine tuning. And it will give you updates really as it as it goes. So if you go onto this one, you can see the training process here. You can also look at the metrics. Uh, which are not available yet, but that shows you kind of how the training and validation errors fall as it goes. We'll fast forward through some more of this. You can see it's starting to give some statistics here as it's going through. Using cross entropy is the metric. Now, I will say this is a fairly trivial example uh, so that I don't incur too much cost. As you bump up that training set size and bigger models, that's definitely, and more epochs, that's definitely how you start to spend more money. I will admit, I tend to use bigger prompts and rag over fine tuning. All right, it completed. Once it's completed, I'm going to need its system prompt so that we don't give it the very helpful system prompt that is built into these models by default. So here is the new system prompt. And we're just going to pop it open in Playground. Notice it does side by side. So this is the normal GPT-4.0 that you trained it on. And then this is your new one. So we're going to go ahead and put in, and we don't want it to sync because they're going to use different system prompts. And that is it. So now we can ask it a question. What? is the capital of the USA. And both of them will tell you. And the, the existing chat is quite nice. This one, Washington DC, as if it is in common knowledge. All right, that is the beginnings of uh, fine tuning. Now, a definite devil's advocate question, remember this is a toy example, is what would happen if I just put the system prompt over here in the main, the main prompt just to overrule its built-in system prompt? The answer is you'd get results pretty similar to what you're seeing from the fine-tuned model. So this is not a perfect example, but it does show you how to go through the motions to, to begin fine-tuning, to really fine-tune, to really see some results. You'll need bigger training sets and you will possibly need, need more epochs. Certainly, I don't think you would need the bigger model. That gets fairly expensive when you try to fine tune the bigger model. All right. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything related to this class and smash the like button if this was useful to you. Thank you very much.